Hello, this is Scott Pachano from telecoms.com. I'm here with Ian Morris from Light Reading and we're at Cable Next Gen Europe. Yeah, is that what I think it is? so, yeah. It's oh, one of your events, isn't it? It is, yeah. Your Cable lot. Next Gen Europe, yes, definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks to your lot. <laughs> um, and so, yes, cable, cable's a slightly sort of weird term for Europe because we yeah. don't really use it that much, but it's sort of fixed line. Yeah. Um, and we're just going to quickly recap some of the stuff we found interesting. I'll start. Yeah. Um, there was a panel earlier on where they were talking about Wi Fi. And one of the points they were making from about Wi-Fi is it's actually operator's problem. Because if you're anyone, if you're an end user, and you bought, let's say, one gigabit um, per second bandwidth, and then you check out your phone or your iPad or whatever, and you're getting nowhere near that, you're, you're going to hold your operator responsible, your CSP responsible, even though there are countless other things that might stand in the way. For example, the quality of the router, the quality of your devices, the amount of walls in between all this sort of thing. But ultimately, they're still going to ring up the call center of the operator. So I thought that was an interesting thing. As much as a consumer, as a supposed industry expert, although I think I fall far short of that. Um, and uh, but yeah. what, what are they doing about it? I mean, because it puts pressure on the operators. Everybody blames them, I suppose, for well, problems. And, uh, and, and then it might be just that your device is really old and won't support that kind of bandwidth. So, so there's two things I took from that. One is educating the consumer a little bit better. Not educating them about technology and explaining 802 dot all that Whatever stuff. it might be, yeah. Um, but just explaining that there are things they can do to help themselves. Yeah. Without, obviously, it sounding like that you're victim blaming or yeah. something. And then the other one uh, they talked about at the end, they talked about sort of managed Wi-Fi as a, perhaps an added value that for them to go, you know, I don't think you get away with charging too much. Right. But going, look, okay. It's just high, kind of higher quality yeah, Wi-Fi. A, a sort of add-on service is we will own your Wi-Fi and make right. sure it's optimal. So, yeah, that all made sense. So, um, yeah, what about you? I mean, uh, I suppose one of the... Uh, interesting sessions for me was on 5G and what, what kind of challenge that poses to, to cable. Uh, right. and, and I mean, when the event was introduced this morning, it's very much in the context of you know 5G is coming and yep. what does what does that mean if anything for cable operators? And I think and does it mean anything? Well, I think it's still pretty inconclusive. I mean, I was, I was chatting to uh, Alan Bresnik, he's one, one of our analysts and editors, um, and you know you certainly see companies trying to or thinking about using 5G to provide residential broadband services. So that's something that Verizon's oh, you doing. Oh, like fixed wireless access. Fixed wireless like access, yeah. yeah. Something that Verizon's doing in the US. And there's trials going on with companies like Orange in Europe. Um, and that's that's definitely something that cable operators are quite worried about. You know, they see that as a, as a potential challenge to uh, to their business, from what I've heard. Well, you and I have chatted about this a few times, I think certainly on the podcast and, and just in private. But certainly your view, from what I've got it, Correct me if I'm misrepresenting you. Is that fixed wireless access is quite a sort of narrow business I, I model? I think it's narrow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think. I mean, Gabriel Brown, another another heavy, heavy reading analyst, yeah. just to sort of uh, principal promote analyst. our principal analyst, yeah, to promote our people. Um, he he made the yeah, point on the panel, panel session that uh, you know if he was a cable operator, he'd be far more worried about the likes of City Fibre, which is one right. of the companies that was here today, here today yeah, yeah. coming along, building all fibre networks, you know, pushing different kinds of model. Um, different approaches, um, and he said he said that's something that they should be far more concerned about than 5G coming along. I, mean, I think that yeah. that FWA thing really is going to be quite a niche thing in Europe. Yeah. I think in most cases. Think your so just to just to sort of square those two up, another thing that came up with 5G in the context of fixed is are people increasingly going to be using uh, 5G, i.e. cellular wireless in the home instead of Wi-Fi? Yeah. And my my sort of concluding view on this is probably not. Because my reason is because Wi-Fi, we're already used to it, and because broadband is is unmetered. Yeah. So yes, we maybe we'll see some growth in unmetered mobile stuff, but right now we can we can be at home streaming Netflix, streaming everything, kids streaming stuff, adults streaming stuff. We're not worried about the bill implications. It's a flat fee. Yeah. As long as there's always that, people are gonna err towards Wi-Fi just because there, there isn't the cost implication, even if the technology is in some ways inferior. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, I don't think it's something that they have to worry about too much in turn. I mean, Wi-Fi is always going to be here, I think, and uh, there, was, there were stats provided last week. I was at, actually at a Wi-Fi conference last week where they were talking about... You're a bit nine, at nine, the moment, aren't you? Exactly, yeah. Nine billion devices, apparently, in the market at the moment. Right. So, I don't, I don't think Wi-Fi is going to go away. I no. think with 5G you might see some challenges in the enterprise perhaps where companies want some kind of manage, like, like managed Wi-Fi I guess, but yeah. they want the, 
the different the different kinds of um, service that you can get with 5G. Yeah. Yeah, this is where the network size comes in. Where people are prepared to pay a premium. Prepared to pay a premium yeah. to get different different types of uh, quality service, and uh, that's that could maybe shrink the Wi-Fi opportunity, I guess, in some instances. But I don't think it's going to disappear in, in the home environment. I can't see it. Uh, okay. Can't see it vanishing. Right, cool. Well, as uh, anyone who's watching this can probably tell from the background, there are people drinking beer and wine and me and Ian aren't, which is just a sad state of affairs, so we're going to address that right now. See you for the next one.